Okay, thank you very much. So I'm Elias Ahmed, I'm scientist researcher at Sintev Digital in the Computational Geosciences Group. And I will talk about modeling phase behavior and block oil simulation for underground hydrogen storage. This is work with my colleagues Xavier Reynou, Olaf Minor, and Halvor Nielsen. Okay, so this is the plan. I will talk, uh, I, will, I will give a small presentation of two uh, solubility models that we implemented uh, to be used into black oil simulation of the tabulating PVT data. And I will, con will conclude with the, some numerical examples and uh, conclusion. So, uh, so uh, this slide, I will talk about the challenges for safe and efficient underground uh, hydrogen storage modeling. And one of the main issue or the challenge is that we have multiple sites or multiple type for hydrogen storage here, uh, conventional or non-conventional, which complicate finding the correct model to uh, model hydrogen storage in, um, in all of them together. Since the physics depends uh, strongly, uh, if we think, for example, of uh, H2 uh, loss due to the biochemical reaction, this will not likely to happen in salt caverns, for example, but uh, in depleted reservoir, this is a main issue. Also, even thought that the tightness is considered to be guaranteed in all of them, there is things that, uh, uh, that uh, may contribute into uh, leakage of the hydrogen in the caprock. For example, the existence, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, sorry. Do you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. All good. Yeah, I don't know what happens here. Okay, yeah, uh, as I said, so uh, the physics depends on the in the in the storage site and uh, if we have to consider the correct model then um, um, in the correct model, then we have to think that the effects that are most important that exist in the site, for example, if we think about h two loss, uh, due to the leakage to, into the cap rock, then it would be enough to consider black oil models and um, and uh, if we think about uh, um, depleted oil and gas reservoir, then we have to think about uh, more compositional model. We have we have a residual oil that exists in the uh, in the reservoir, and then we have we are facing complex mixture. Yeah, so uh, we are we will use MLST in our simulation. So uh, as I said uh, before, we uh, we have in MLST uh, several models, starting from proxy models into uh, to uh, more complex uh, black oil models or advanced black oil models, and uh, we have also compositional models. And for the moment, if we stuck into uh, uh, brine H2 mixture, then uh, we can consider black oil models, but we will need uh, uh, to have the correct uh, EOS models for that. So black oil models, they are easy to use, computationally efficient and enough for our application in saline aquifers and salt caverns. Also, uh, the representation of phase is reasonably OK. So we don't think about components since we don't have um, or um, we, uh, we don't account for the H2 impurity due to the mixing with uh, with oil, for example, or other component in the in the storage zone. The disadvantage of that is that we account for just simplified composition. We cannot account for the H2 purity or include caching gas. And uh, if we we want we want uh, in-depth compositional study, then we have to move into uh, compositional models. So as I said, uh, no, we consider just black oil models, and for that we need uh, to implement some EOS models to account for the brine H2 mixture. And uh, we were implementing three type of EOS going from complex one that can be extended into a complex mixture like PC soft to uh, another EOS or that can be specific to H2 brine and also uh, a correlation based uh, equation of state. And to evaluate or to compare all of them, we have to base our comparison into the ability to represent the physical phenomena 
but also to find a good balance between the accuracy and the computational efficiency of that EOS since it will be included into already complex or, um, or uh, highly expensive uh, computations. So the objective of this work is to implement thermodynamic models tailored for the H2 brine system and then try to convert them into PVT data, black oil PVT data to be used into black oil models within uh, the MRC framework. Keep in mind that the standard equation of state like Peng-Rebenson uh, has some limitation when simulating gas solubility in aqueous phase and for that reason we are doing this step. Yeah, so uh, the first equation of state is the PC soft which is derived from the Ilmolt's energy and uh, which require the inversion or, uh, or of reduced density based on uh, temperature and pressure inputs. And this is the main ingredient which is expensive to do in, uh, in, uh, in uh, compositional uh, simulation since it will be done at each iteration and at each maybe uh, uh, Newton iterations. So uh, the key ingredient for PC soft is that you have to tune the binary parameters in order to compensate for the EOS limitation. So, uh, and you need some uh, expertise in order to set up the parameters for the pure component. And it requires uh, a, few a, few, a, few, um, uh, a few terms that account for the ionic, dissipative, associative, and so on and so on energy into uh, into um, into uh, the Helmholtz energy, but specifying some of them for the our application uh, is enough. And for that reason, we consider just the ionic, dissipative, and associative energy. While in the current implementation, we account also for the hard chain and other type of uh, of energy. So uh, uh, the PC soft, uh, we uh, implemented this already for CO2 uh, storage uh, in the previous years and uh, we found that it's expensive to be considered into compositional simulation or black oil simulation, but maybe it's uh, it's feasible to uh, just tabulate the PVT data and use it to tabulate PVT data. And uh, for that reason, we said, OK, that we implement another simplified model, which uh, come from this paper of uh, Rad and other authors, which they presented the equivalent to Proust model for CO2, uh, uh, for, for the CO2 storage. Uh, um, and this model is simplified and somehow explicit that is based on the Redlich and Pong EOS model and require or and provides a fewer correlation for the transport property like brine, uh, viscosity, gas viscosity, and molecular diffusion coefficients. So uh, uh, this is uh, the second uh, equation of state that we implemented, and we think that it's easier to couple with transport. Also, it can be simplified by uh, tuning the mixing rule so the model can be uh, explicit and no iterative and but has the limitation to be specific to H2 brine mixture and it's impossible for the moment to account for caching gas. So here I'm comparing the two uh, solubility models with the experimental data or the data from the literature and both of them they match uh, uh, the experimental data and we were a little bit uh, surprised by the accuracy of the reduced model while we uh, tried to keep it simple, no iterative and tuning or uh, removing all the complexity and using average volume to, um, to, uh, to, to, to calculate the fugacity uh, and we found that it's really inexpensive and uh, surprisingly accurate. While PC soft require calibration of the binary parameters, otherwise we cannot, uh, the PC soft cannot reflect the, the parabolic trend of the solubility of hydrogen in uh, water and cannot detect the minimum uh, temperature, which is around 330. So uh, yeah, uh, but we still consider to use PC soft if we extend our mixture uh, into more complex uh, 
mixture by including cash and gas, for example. Here we compare just the density uh, for the pure component to the correlation in the RAD uh, paper uh, to PCSAFT and to data from NIST. And uh, we can see that both models align with the experimental data. Even thought uh, um, the correlation uh, somehow uh, struggle to uh, to um, struggle to deep, uh, struggle to, um, um, to, uh, to to match to match the experimental data when we change uh, drastically the, the the temperature. Yeah, for this range between 280 and 340 temperature, which is the normal temperature for hydrogen storage, then. Uh, uh, both of them align with the experimental data. Yeah, so uh, as I said, uh, for PCSAFT, we were uh, trying to calibrate the binary parameters in order to uh, to, uh, to match the experimental data, and we did the same for the Henri's law. While Henri's law is often used to describe the solubility of gases in liquid, it is specifically applied when we have low and moderate partial temperature and pressures. And uh, here we are just extending Henri's law to account uh, for high pressure and temperature by modifying it and using uh, some formula for the Henri constant. And as you can see in this equation, we are we have uh, Henri's law, uh, Henri is constant that depends on the temperature based on this formula, but also we balance uh, the dependence on the salinity as well by adding this term that takes this form. And uh, the parameters in this equation of state were determined by regression uh, problem by solving a regression problem that fit uh, that uh, that compute the distance between uh, uh, the solubility of this model uh, to the, the solubility data from the literature and this model can be also completed by adding some other relevant correlation to provide a more complete representation of the system and i mean here the solubility of water in hydrogen or brine viscosity and uh, densities. And uh, as you can see here in this uh, figure where I compare the standard or uh, is low to the this modified uh, low, uh, uh, as I think it's similar to PC soft uh, or is low fails to detect um, uh, or to, to detect this parabolic trend of the solubility of H2, while if you extend the, the if you extend the Henri's constant by uh, adding some dependence on the temperature, you can recover this, uh, this trend. After implementing this, uh, after implementing this solubility models, so uh, we were in the position to tabulate the PVT data and to use them into uh, black oil simulations. So this is a sketch of our the algorithm. You will need to inject the minimum and the maximum pressure and temperature. Define your number of temperature steps and pressure steps, and then compute the solubility based on the chosen uh, equation of state. And then generate uh, um, the um, generate the fluid property and end up with writing the real perm and the capillary pressure for the um, using some specific parameters you have to check uh, or to to set up the predictable saturation for h2 and uh, and water for example and the uh, and the onto pressure and also uh, this uh, also support multiple erosions so uh, the next step is an illustrative example here we have uh, domain with uh, multiple regions, cap rock, storage zone, and under burden or bedrock. And uh, we have different entry pressure for all of them, which is high in the cap rock, a little bit less in the under burden, and uh, uh, not important entry pressure in the storage zone. And this is the permeability, which we consider to be. 100 times more permeable in the storage zone than the cap rock and uh, the under burden should be just um, uh, 10 times uh, less than the storage zone. Well, here we were injecting uh, 
uh, we have a cycle that with injection period, idle period or rest period, and then production period. So this is the saturation after the first injection period and after the first period uh, production period and also after the fifth injection period and after the fifth production period. And as we can see, the effect of the dissolution of the hydrogen in water after uh, after the production uh, uh, period, but also we can start to see that the hydrogen is leaking into the cap rock. Even thought we thought the inverse, we or we thought the opposite based on our simple calculation of the entry pressure, but it happens to uh, to leak, and we are intending to evaluate how much is uh, is leaking into the cap rock. This is uh, the total mass flux during the simulation or the, during the five cycle. And here we are comparing the constant injection rate and ramping injector rate. And uh, basically you need to inject slowly until you touch the point that the, can the, the, the pressure will exceed the cap rock is on pressure and then you have to slow it down uh, or, or switch to the, um, to the rest period. So uh, this is a feature, we added this feature to our implementation in order to control the injection uh, scenario. In the right figure, we plot the BHP over the entire simulation, and uh, we can see uh, uh, also uh, that we can also uh, use uh, ramping uh, BHP uh, control as well. Here is somehow uh, presenting the quantity of H2 that leaked to the, into the cap rock. Uh, in the first figure is the ratio of the total mass flux, so hydrogen uh, and water, and we can see also in the, the right figure the average uh, hydrogen saturation in that in the in the cap rock and it's uh, in, uh, in uh, coherent with the literature that the liquid uh, hydrogen will not exceed uh, yeah five to six percent over five years here it's uh, the, the don't touch simulation over four years and it doesn't exceed seven percent so um, so it's not a big big issue but we have to investigate investigate uh, our value for the entry pressure this is another example where we use the Johansson formation uh, to inject uh, the hydrogen. And this is the saturation after one year of injection. And in the left hand side, we have the, the grid from the Johansson formation. So this is what we have uh, for today. So uh, to conclude, we have implemented three types of equation of state from complicated to less complicated to to correlation-based uh, equation of state. We were able to tabulate them and use them into black oil models in, uh, in MLST. And in the next steps, we will have to do more testing and validation, maybe comparing our black oil simulation to uh, composition simulation for the brine H2 scenario, and also try to control the injection since we have seen that we uh, exceed the entry pressure and we have some leakage there. So we have to control better our, uh, the injection scenario and the production scenario. And also uh, it's important to count for the molecular diffusion. Um, and this is the feature that we plan to do in the next few days. Thank you. I will be happy to answer some questions.